Hey everybody, what's going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. Let's get into this video. This time we're going to be talking about something that I have been trying to get my hands on for the last 14 months. I first saw this way back in January of 2023 and then again in late summer of 2023 at TriggerCon and I was uh, really interested in what this had to bring to the market and I think it's something that might be uh, a bit of a game changer in this sector of the industry. Now before we get into the video I do want to make sure that everyone understands that I'm not getting paid to say anything good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, my relationship with the company is that of me just requesting a test and evaluation sample and that's it. I'm going to talk about the good with the bad and let you guys decide what you think of it and go from there. What are we talking about? You guys should already know. We're going to be talking about the Oracle Arms 2311 or what is now known as OA Defense 2311. Change their name a little bit, but we're going to use Oracle, Oracle Arms, all of that interchangeably in this video. Now, this is going to be a double stack 9mm 1911, very much similar to that of, say, like the Prodigy or a Staccato or those types of pistols. But first and foremost, my question to you guys is, what do you think of double stack 1911 9mm pistols? Do you think that this is the way of the future as far as 1911s go or are you a little bit more nostalgic and like the 45 ACP standard 1911? Let me know, sound off in the comment section down below. Now, me personally, I have a profound love for the 1911. It's one of the first pistols that I think I ever remember shooting. And so, yeah, with all of that being said, uh, take a second for some shameless self-promotion. <laughs> if you guys like this type of content, uh, you think I'm doing a good job, I'd Greatly appreciate you considering subscribing by clicking that button down below. Likes, comments, and shares of this video is also a great way to support the channel. And I'm also doing a podcast with my cameraman, Hefe, and that is called the Live, Laugh, LARP podcast. I'll have a link to that down in the pinned comment for you guys to check out. I would greatly appreciate it. So thanks for all that. Okay, so let's get into this. Uh, this is going to be the full-size version of the Oracle Arms 2311. This has a lot of great things going for it, and it has a lot of very interesting takes for a 1911. First and foremost is that this is going to take P320 magazines. Now you have the Stealth Arms Platypus that takes Glock magazines and I really like that idea to kind of streamline the aftermarket accessibility to things like magazines. Anytime that you're able to reduce the cost of ownership for a pistol like this, that's going to run somewhere around that $1,900 to $2,200 mark, depending on when and where you buy it. Uh, I just checked on my phone before I started recording this, and we're looking at about $2,150 is what I saw for this particular model. So anytime that you can reduce the cost of ownership in magazines, per se, uh, then that's a huge plus. In addition to that, this has a lot of attributes that uh, lends itself as a viable competitor to that of, say, like a staccato. So there is also that as well. So this is going to come in at about 29 ounces. It's going to be the five inch barreled version. They also have a 4.25 inch barreled version, which is their compact. Another great thing about it is since it is accepting P320 magazines, you're going to have a magazine release right here, exactly where you would expect it to be, say like on a P320, and it is reversible as well. So that allows you to have a nearly fully ambidextrous pistol. So that is another major plus. In addition to that, with the polymer frame, you are going to have these really nice wings on here for uh, basically a gas pedal, uh, if you want to call it that. Allows you to get your non-firing thumb on a really good rest to help mitigate 
recoil on this as well as a really nice texture on the frame on the pistol grip to get a good purchase on your non-firing hand to really dig in on that grip to help run this as fast as possible that's something i really really did like about how they have all of this set up naturally you can see i have an rmr set up on here it does come with a slide cut and it comes with three plates that is going to have an integrated rear sight now for me that's not really that big of a deal because I, i'm reliant on the red dot for this particular pistol and uh looking into some of the other videos that have been put out by this specifically from the humble marksman really big fan of his uh he was running a hollow sun 507c which did not allow you to co-witness with these standard iron sights here and uh, realistically you're not going to be able to do that with an rmr as well but one thing that this does do is as you're building your grip and presenting the firearm you can utilize the front and rear sights as basically a reference to find that dot as you extend out. So that is a uh, added bonus for that particular setup. So good job there. Has some really sleek lines here. It has a tapered slide with uh, some, I wouldn't say overly aggressive, but uh, slide serrations that work for any type of uh, front racking or press check or something to that effect. So that is another great attribute. Uh, to the des design of this. Uh, naturally, on the full size, you're going to have ambidextrous uh, thumb safety here that is a really good ledge for your firing thumb to rest against. I really did like that. Uh, the detent on this particular pistol has pretty positive traction on that, so uh, staying on the safe or in the fire position is fairly easy. Uh, another great thing about this is it does not have a grip safety on here and that is a huge departure from the 1911s. I really do like that. Uh, you don't have to worry about getting a perfect grip as you're firing that first round. You might need to adjust for the second but not having that perfect grip allows you to get that first round out quickly without any type of unnecessary malfunction so to speak so there is that aspect of it one of the things that i found a little difficult with this being a double stack nine millimeter is uh, the size of the grip was just a little bit big for my hand not anything that would cause me to shy away from this pistol it's just a little bit bigger than what i'm used to and so anytime that i was doing manipulations like reloads um, I would have to break my grip to drop the mag and then to get this slide release. I really couldn't get after it with my firing thumb. What I would do is insert the magazine, reach up and drop the slide and then build my grip as I extend it out. So there was that aspect of it. But talking with the humble marksman, he did point out that there is the ability to use your index finger on this right side slide release to drop the slide and i thought that that was a really smart way of doing it now that's not something that is going to be very intuitive you're going to have to train yourself to do that um, and to do it without accidentally putting this on safe but uh, it's a technique to say the least another great thing about this particular setup is you don't have to worry about issues with the p320 everybody has their jokes about oh don't drop a p320 and it's going to shoot itself and da 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 you don't have to worry about that just because it accepts p320 magazines doesn't mean that it's using the same trigger mechanism this is using a 70 series trigger uh, so the only thing that is compatible when it comes to p320 is going to be the magazine so that's another uh, added bonus in addition to that one of the other great things is because of this tapered slide up here they uh, went away from a bowl barrel and are using much more of a like uh, cz 75 style barrel 
uh, that allows for a little bit more room for some aesthetic changes to the slide so it's not so blocky. Uh, it is a little bit more tapered, so that's another added bonus there. So right out of the box, I really did enjoy this pistol. A lot of great things going for it. Very, very intriguing to see all the different uh, aspects of this, like not having a bushing on the front uh, to take it down and go from there. So let's talk about my shooting experience with this. Really, there's not too much to write home about as far as anything bad going on during the first 500 rounds. Uh, for a lot of you that have watched my channel before, you know how I like to do things. I will take a firearm straight from the box and run it and talk to you guys about any types of potential failures in doing so. I know a lot of people have complaints about that, and I'm not saying that that's what I recommend people to do, but at the same time, as a reviewer, that's something that I uh, try to do to see how far I can push it. Exactly the same thing I did with this one. I didn't disassemble it and clean it and everything like that. What I did do though is I just racked this uh, slide back, dropped some oil on the exposed slide and frame, a little bit here on the barrel, on the uh, chamber here as well, and just ran it. That's, that's really all I've done to it. In addition to that, of the 500 rounds, I have not cleaned it either. I wanted to really see how dirty I could get this before I decided to take it apart, clean it, and then get it back through its next 500 rounds. And I've had only two issues. One was a failure to feed. It just didn't feed around for whatever reason. Maybe the rounds got kind of hung up in the magazine, so a tap rack fixed that problem. The second issue that I ran into was a extractor related issue. I had it feed that round in, but then it stopped about a quarter of an inch or so away from completely going into battery. And that particular round, the extractor just would not go over the lip of the case. So I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Uh, I did rack that round out and Fed it, tried to feed it back in, it still wouldn't go the second time, but of those two rounds, that's the only complaints that I have as far as its reliability. So, um, could be ammo related, could be magazine related, but since then I've run the same magazines, came with five and I've had zero issues there. What I will say was that there was about a hundred round break-in period. You could really tell that this started to work itself in after about the first 100 rounds. And for me and my shooting abilities, I'm used to shooting polymer frame striker fired pistols. So moving from say a CZ P10C to something like this, there's a little bit of a different recoil impulse that I'm not used to. And it just involves the fall of the hammer and then the, the, the pistol going off and then the resistance of the slide pushing it back against the hammer to cock it. So it's going to feel a lot more sluggish than say a Glock or a P10C or even a SIG, but it doesn't mean that it's running any slower, if that makes any sense. Trigger on this was really, really nice. Uh, coming in about four to four and a half pounds with my Wheeler gauge, I was getting four and a half pounds. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. So here's your take up. There's really nothing, maybe a millimeter, if that. And then it breaks right on over with four and a half pounds. Cycle that back, reset is really short, audible tactile, exactly what you would expect from a 70 series trigger. And then the break over again, really nice. I really like this pistol, but in the first iteration of me shooting this, I did notice that I was shooting low left. That's not anything against the pistol. That's all me and moving from one pistol to another, to another, to another, each and every single week or every couple of weeks, I have developed training scars. So taking this to the first IDPA match, shooting it, 
uh, it ran great, uh, had a had a blast, uh, shot really fast, and noticed that everything was shooting low left. And again, that was just me. Went out and shot with my cameraman, Hefe Actual, and uh, we ran some drills. Again, noticed that I was shooting low left. What I ended up doing is slowing down a little bit, adjusting my uh, grip ever so slightly to get a little less of my trigger finger on to the trigger, and then went after those drills again. Improved my accuracy with this in those drills and uh, so and started to notice a little bit more of a uh, improvement with it and felt a little bit more confident. Took it to the next IDPA match and slowed down my shooting. My split times were a lot slower, but my accuracy was uh, really amazing. I, on one iteration, I had rounds that were stacked right on top of each other on a target and uh, it really bolstered my confidence with this. Finally took it to a two gun shoot just a couple of weeks ago and um, had zero issues uh, with the exception of one thing we'll talk about here, here in just a second. But um, as far as shooting goes, it ran flawlessly and um, was really, really confident. So no complaints there. I'm not a competition shooter. That is people like the Humble Marksman. Uh, definitely check out his videos. Uh, he really gets this thing going as fast as he can possibly take it. And uh, he's far better shooter uh, with pistols than I am. So definitely check his stuff out. All right, so I've talked about all the things that I love about this pistol. Now let's talk about some of the concerns that I have with it as well. Um, there are three things that I want to point out, and I can tell you that two of the things have already been corrected. We'll touch on that here uh, in just a second. But the first thing happened in my first stage at the two gun match, uh, loaded up the pistol and put it into my holster. The stopwatch goes beep run up to the shooting position, pull up the pistol and pull the trigger and guess what? Click no bang and a major flinch. <laughs> but uh, what essentially had happened is on a full magazine, I inserted it, racked the slide, but didn't check to see if the magazine was fully seated. That 17th round really or, uh, compacts that spring, not allowing you to fully seat it unless you really jam it in there. So uh, I would say make sure that you lock the slide back and then load the magazine and then drop it, drop the slide from there. That's not something I'm normally doing with my polymer frame pistols like the Glocks, the CZs or whatever. Uh, so that was something that I had to kind of train myself back into doing. That's number one. Number two um, is the red dot. So I'm running a Trigicon RMR and it's got an, I thought a really good plate, but as you can see in here, I can move this thing around quite a bit. <laughs> uh, this is uh, loose and I left it loose intentionally because I wanted to show you guys, but this is the second time that this has come loose. The first time was after the first IDPA match. So within the first, I would say 150 to 200 rounds and tighten it back up, use blue Loctite, the correct Loctite, torqued it down to spec. And here we are just a couple hundred rounds later and it's loose again. So um, that was a concern. I did reach out to uh, Oracle Arms and talk to them about it and they have told me that this particular pistol was part of their first run and some of the first pistols that were sent out for test and evaluation. Obviously I have one so um, they have changed the plate and the geometry of the screws to ensure that they are able to get a better bite and that you can torque them down a little bit better my understanding. So the screws loosening up is not a problem anymore. So 
good to see that they are aware of the problem and they've fixed it. So if you were to go out and purchase one of these right now, you should not have that problem. So that's number one. Number two is this front sight right here. Uh, I, can, I can move it with my finger. I noticed it, um, see, I just moved it all the way to the left there, and then now I can move it all the way back. And again, that is an issue that they found with the first run of these pistols from last year. Uh, they have changed that as well, so this is going to be a tighter fit. So if you have any of those issues with one that you may have already purchased, definitely reach out to them. They're aware of it. They're working to correct those issues. So um, that is kind of the things that I have to say when it comes to the issues with this pistol. Outside of that, I have had a great time shooting this. It's a lot of fun. It is pricey. You know, we're, we're approaching $2,200 before you even add a red dot. Um, you know, I understand that. And a lot of people might say, well, you know, the Springfield Prodigy is about $600 less or more, uh, depending on when and where you buy it. And yeah, sure, uh, no problems there. Um, but the Prodigy has had a bit of a track record with it, you know, kind of stumbling out of the gates. I have one. I purchased a used one from my local shop. We're going to do a comparison with this. I'm going to film a 500 round review to kind of give you guys my initial impressions of it. And then we'll compare it with this one as we push both of those to the thousand round mark. So uh, that's going to be coming up here pretty soon. So really do like it, has an aesthetic to it, you know, just freaking space age 2311. Really, really think it's cool. External extractor makes things a lot better as well. So i leave it to you guys. What do you think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Would the Oracle Arms 2311 be a pistol that you would reach out and get? Or are there other pistols that you would rather have instead? Obviously, we're not talking about Glocks or SIGs or anything like that. We're talking 2311, 1911 style pistols. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. With all that being said, we're going to continue to push this into the thousand round mark and give you guys a heads up as to what I think about it. I, I don't see any issues moving forward with this pistol. I do have a new plate and screws coming from Oracle. They're getting me set up with the new style, so shouldn't have any more issues with that as well. So, um, but there you have it. I've had a lot of fun and I'm gonna continue to have fun. We'll get you some more information on this and more videos on it here pretty soon as well. So. With that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here again. Thank you so much for everybody's support. If you guys are interested in checking out the podcast, again, link in the pinned comment, and we will catch you guys next time. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.